Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has the best roster of playable characters by far compared to other entries in the series. But just because it has the best roster overall, that doesn't mean I like every character. Hey internet, I'm Mike Bryce, and for this video, I'm going to be ranking every single character in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe based off of how much I like them as a character. Keep in mind this ranking is not based off of stats or how meta the character is, and solely based off of how much I like them. Once again for the people in the back, this ranking is not based off of stats and is solely based off of how much I like them. After you watch the video, be sure to let me know your rankings of the characters in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe, as we are currently on the path to 5,000 subscribers. Being able to connect to fellow Nintendo fans is honestly what makes me love creating content, so I just wanted to give a huge thank you to each and every one of you. So with that out of the way, let's rank them up! Coming in as the worst character is Baby Rosalina. She serves absolutely no purpose in the Mario universe other than to fill a character slot in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Her existence also totally negates Rosalina's backstory that was featured in Super Mario Galaxy, and that really pisses me off. Similar to Baby Rosalina, Baby Daisy only exists to fill a character slot as well, but at least she was also featured as a playable character in Mario Super Sluggers on the Wii. As much as I love Daisy, we really didn't need to see her in baby form. Especially since she doesn't have the same energy that Daisy does. Are you noticing a theme here? While Baby Peach wasn't created just for Mario Kart, she really is just another useless baby with no personality other than being able to make your ears bleed with her annoying crying. But she did have more prominent roles in Mario and Luigi Partners in Time and Yoshi's Island DS, so I had to place her above the other two. Shut. The. F up. I'm placing baby Luigi above the other babies solely because I feel like he doesn't cry as much as the other ones. And my ears appreciate that. Why do you exist? It's just a metal version of Peach that has the same animations as regular Peach, with a metallic effect to her voice. I wish it would have made her more of a villain or rival for Peach, then she'd feel more like her own character. Same thing goes for Metal Mario. I'm only placing him above Pink Gold Peach because he's appeared in more games than her. And I'm more familiar with him, I guess. Another lazy clone, but at least he has unique trick animations. You're lucky I like cats, or I'd be placing Tanuki Mario above you. Out of all the characters from Mario Kart Tour, Nintendo chose Peachette as the final DLC character? At least she looks cute and has a unique biker outfit, but ultimately she's just a power-up turned playable character like the previous two. Villager just doesn't do it for me. Perhaps if they had more alts to choose from, but the two provided are just so bland and boring looking. Get ready to see a lot of these guys in the next minute! Lemmy to me has to be the most forgettable of the Koopalings. He's so forgettable for me in fact that I forgot about him when I originally made this list and had to add him in after. But at least he's a unique character and not a baby alt or power up! I guess the palm tree looking hair is cool, but Iggy is usually one of the easiest Koopalings to beat in the 2D Mario games. What to say about Morton? Uh, your star looking birthmark looks cool! I get major DJ vibes from Roy. I'd party with him. I'm sure he would drop some sick beats. The hair is honestly what puts Ludwig above the other Koopalings. I wish I could rock that look. If I would have made this list five years ago, Berta would have been way lower. But she's starting to grow on me. Starting to. That's why she's still low. The giant hole in her face still gives me the creeps though. Did you know that 94% of people who watch my content aren't subscribed? If you enjoy the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to get notified when I upload future videos. And your support to the channel is much appreciated and does not go unnoticed. Anyways, back to the video. I've never played Splatoon, so I don't really know anything about the Inklings, so I'm kind of just placing them here based solely on their physical appearance. They look pretty badass, but I just don't know enough about them to really place them any higher. There's dozens of Nintendo characters I would have rather seen occupy the guest slots in this game, but I'm a huge dog person, so I can live with her being in the game. Plus, her breed has a bad word in it, and it's humorous to me. One of the most iconic Mario enemies. Koopa definitely deserves a spot in this game, but there's more interesting Koopa-like characters that just have a bit more to offer in terms of personality and appearance. Like Lakitu! I will admit it is a bit odd seeing a Lakitu as a playable character when there's also one that serves as the referee of the game, but they do have different colored shells. I will say it is a bit weird seeing Lakitu without his cloud though. I'm not going to lie here, the only reason Larry is so high here is due to the fact that Larry is also my dad's name. Hi dad! Aren't you proud that this is how I'm spending my free time? He's a dead Koopa. Morbid? 
Yes. Cool? Hell yeah! When is Nintendo ever going to do something important with this guy? Like add him to Smash as a full-on playable character? Waluigi is just a walking meme at this point, and while it can't be funny at times, I think he is a bit overrated for what he actually offers. When Peach is a playable character, she's pretty good. But when she's just the damsel, she's boring and useless. I like how Nintendo has been adding her as a playable character lately to their 2D games like Super Mario 3D World and Mario Bros. Wonder. But why does she have to be so mean in Mario Party? The Mario movie really made me love Kamek a lot more. I know the quirky and crazy wizard is pretty cliche, but they make for an entertaining character. Bowser's Mini-Me is the only baby-like character that I'm okay with existing in the Mario universe. I love how he's evil just like his papa, but also has those moments where he straight up acts like an actual child. I wish they wouldn't keep him in that Koopa Clown car in the recent Mario sports games. King Boo from the Luigi's Mansion series is one of my favorite characters, due to his cool look and aura. However, the Mario Kart version of King Boo is legit just a larger Boo with a crown. So we had to get knocked down on this list due to that. Bowser's badass skeletal form. The way his shell glows orange in this game is such a cool touch. Mr. All Around himself. You can't help but love him, but since he is a cookie cutter hero, there's just some other personalities on this list that outshine the titular character. I can honestly see why the oversized piranha plant was one of the breakout characters from Mario Sunshine. He's wacky and unpredictable. I'm just glad he was added back to Mario Kart, and unlike Double Dash, his head doesn't obstruct your view of the road. Three words, Moo Moo Suit! Rosalina used to be a lot higher for me, but after the Wii U era of Nintendo shoving her down our throats and stripping away her mystic aura, she's moved down a bit for me. Toadette is the opposite of Rosalina, where Nintendo has really added more personality to her character over the past few years. You go, girl! He may be meta in Mario Kart Wii, but he's not quite meta in my heart. He's close though with his surfer bro energy, dudes. He's bigger, faster, and stronger too. He's the first member of my DK crew, except not really. But DK has always been a fan favorite of mine, especially in Mario Kart 64's battle mode. Wiggler is one of my favorite Mario enemies. Heck, I don't even know if I'd call Wiggler an enemy because half the time Wigglers are just minding their own business and Mario comes along and disturbs them. If there's one thing you don't want to do, it's make a Wiggler mad. The quick contrast from cute and happy to vicious and angry is what makes Wiggler a fun character. Pauline's been getting a lot of love lately, and I'm all for it. It's so refreshing to see a female human character who's not royalty. Not only is she mayor of New Donk City, but Girl also has a set of pipes on her. I know there's a lot of guys out there who'd love to be your one boy. I hope this placement pisses a bunch of people off. Wendy is by far the best Koopaling and gets way too much unnecessary hate. She's the most unique Koopaling and even has unique rivals in Mario Kart being Peach and Daisy. Wendy is an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. Toad has grown on me a lot over the years. I used to think he was a diaper wearing mushroom turd. But as I aged, I came to realize how cool Toad really was. The Mario movie cemented Toad's awesomeness for me thanks to how they portrayed him in the film. Luigi doesn't get enough love. He's Mario but with a personality. The cowardly trope can be a little annoying, but Luigi just makes it so charming for me. Plus, he somehow managed to bang Daisy, so we gotta show bro some respect for that. Shy Guys are my favorite all-time Mario enemies. The mystery of why they're hiding their faces under the masks is so intriguing to me. As much as I'd love to see what's under there, I hope Nintendo never shows us to keep up the mystery. Wario has grown a lot of me over the past few years. I originally chose to play as him in Mario Party Superstars for the lols, and ended up going on a huge winning streak with him. He's a funny character, and has even spawned a solid collection of Wario games. How could you not love Yoshi? He's a cute and cuddly dino who shoots eggs at enemies that come from his butt. Okay, that's actually pretty nasty, but Yoshi's just so sweet that we won't hold it against him. The himbo of Hyrule not only has a place in my heart, but also a place in my pants. As a massive Legend of Zelda fan, I'm so happy to see Link here, even if he does seem a little out of place. Bowser has to be one of the best villains in any form of media of all time. He's so recognizable and has a charming aura about him. He's not the most flashy villain and definitely is not the smartest, but Nintendo does give him enough charming moments, especially in the RPG games where you can't help but root for him. 
Also, his relationship with Bowser Jr. is father-son goals for sure. I can't really explain why I love Diddy Kong so much. Growing up, I was a huge fan of DK64, and Diddy was given some of the best equipment, like the jetpack, peanut pop guns, and electric guitar. He may be small, but you do not want to mess with him. If you know anything about me, this comes as no shock to you. I love Daisy so freaking much. She's a princess character with a personality. Nintendo did try dialing it back with Daisy in the 2010s, but lately it's been giving Daisy her spunk and energetic personality back. I'm not ashamed to say it, I have a shrine in my office dedicated to Daisy. And if that doesn't scream creepy fanboy, I don't know what does. 